Hello again, beautiful people. Welcome or welcome back. It is June, which means that ICAD season is upon us. So ICAD is a challenge that was created by someone named Daisy Yellow over on Instagram. It's been going on for several years now, and it essentially stands for index card a day. Now there are prompts that you can follow and things. Um, I like to just kind of go and do it. Um, I don't really follow prompts. I just kind of play around. And this is something that I discovered back in 2021. And I do have some videos here on my channel where I made a couple of uh, cards on camera. And then last year, I also put out a video where I set aside some supplies and things that I had planned to use. Unfortunately, wasn't able to work as much as I had originally planned for 2022. So 2023, I am trying again. And this year I decided to one, go with a smaller index card, um, the three by five uh, inch blank card. Um, and I decided to create slash decorate a wooden box to house my cards. Uh, there is someone that I follow over on, on YouTube who does uh, index card a day stuff. Let me see if I can find her real quick. Oh, um, her name is Dances with Pipples and she made a decorated a box specifically for her um, cards. And yeah, it inspired me to go ahead and try it myself. So I went to the thrift store that we have here on base and I found this like wooden box for a dollar. Um, I took apart, I already took off the screws and the little like closing mechanism so that way I could paint everything on here and not have to worry about the hardware getting dirty. So my plan for this is I'm gonna attempt to use these really pretty art foamies that I purchased uh, earlier, well, I can't say earlier in the month, but last month, so in the month of May. Um, so yeah, my plan is to use this, the art foamy for the top of the box. And then I have a couple of just like random stencils that I have laying around that I'm gonna attempt to I'm not sure if I'm gonna use modeling paste or maybe some crackling paste from Tim Holtz to give it some dimension. Uh, but yeah, so I'm just gonna like play around and hopefully this isn't a super hot mess. Um, hopefully this uh, turns out all right. But okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put on some music, maybe do a voiceover for certain parts, but yeah. All right, here we go. The cool thing about this particular box that I found was that because it was like an unfinished, unpainted box, the wood really like absorbed all of the paint very well. So I felt like I really didn't need to put a layer of anything like of primer or gesso or anything underneath. I just went like straight for the painting. Now I knew I wanted my main focal color to be this beautiful, cobalt teal color. Um, I got this one from Hobby Lobby when I was back in the States. It's one of those big thick body acrylic tubes from the Master's Touch because they really like randomly do like the 50% off um, Master's the Master's Touch line. So I picked this color up because teal and turquoise are like my favorite colors. So I knew I wanted that to be the main focus. I wasn't entirely sure if I wanted every single side to be this cobalt teal. So prior to getting started, I like pulled aside a couple of colors that I felt were complementary. Um, so I have like this cobalt teal. I picked out a lime green, a yellow, a dark navy blue, and a red. Because originally I was, um, that particular art foamy stamp set has like a sacred heart stamp that you could put in the center of the larger stamp of the woman. And I was originally going to stamp that on my box, but ultimately I decided against it, but that's why I have the red paint there. This cobalt teal is the only more expensive uh, paint that I used. All the other paint was 
the dollar tubes that you get from like Walmart, the really cheap acrylic paint that you get in their craft section. Um, surprisingly, like here in Germany, I've had a hard time finding a cheaper paint that matches the same quality as those little bottles that you can get back in the States. If there's someone who has a suggestion for a brand here in Germany that is cheap and good quality, please let me know because I have just been um, like hoarding the, pa the paints that I have from back home and whenever I, I do go back home, I always like mail a couple bottles to myself or I bring a couple bottles back with me um, because yeah. I also got it into my head that I was going to do a, a bunch of jelly plate prints, which has not happened as of yet. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, uh, like I said, cheaper quality, not cheaper quality, but cheaper paint. Um, I imagine this whole project, like if you wanted to recreate this on your own, I feel like you could easily do it for... I mean, at least like $5 because I think these boxes, you can now get them at the Dollar Tree for like $1.25. It's been a while, but I know that the Dollar Tree has like revamped their craft section. So I'm sure you could find that there along with some uh, cheaper stencils. And if all else fails, you could also check out Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I know that they all have any larger craft stores will have the unfinished wood projects. Um, but yeah, so as far as the only other, th the only other thing that I used, probably like the most expensive thing that I used, which really isn't even that much, was the Art Foamy stamp. I'm going to go ahead and link those down below because I think this stamp set is like freaking gorgeous. Um, it's by an artist named K, KP, I think is how you pronounce her name. Um... And so the, the stamp of the woman that I use is the focal image on the cover. That's a separate stamp set from the ones for the hands, which you'll see later. But you can get those all at artfoamies.com. Um, Art Foamies, I have a couple and I'm still trying to figure out exactly the, I don't want to say like the right way, but like the best way to use them. I've seen people use them with acrylic paint. You can use them on a jelly plate. They even sell these things called stamp buddies where you, it's almost like a, like a foam stamp pad, but it's obviously there's no color on it. You add the acrylic paint on there and you use that as like a stamp pad for your, um, for your uh, art foamies. Um, I think you can also use regular stamp pads, like ink stamp pads for it. I haven't attempted it, I don't think, on like a larger scale. I think I might have done like for the smaller ones that I have when I was trying to do the um, uh, Shrinky Dink uh, keychains journal charm things, uh, which I will link below if you are interested in that. But yeah, so this is like the first year that I make a special box for my iCADs. Usually I have them just kind of like all over the place in my craft room. I'm really bad about keeping them together. I know last year I was able to make a, a couple on my art Rolodex, which I love. And the only reason I didn't use my Rolodex again this year to add to it was because I had an overabundance of index cards and I really didn't want to go through the hassle of like trimming them or trying to figure out like how to position them in my Rolodex. So yeah and then well I saw this box for like a dollar and I knew it was like a sign that I had to make a box. Um, but yeah I think I'm probably going to continue this practice of like well, once this box is full, assuming I do the full 61 days, um, I definitely feel like this box could hold at least two years worth of iCAD cards. Um, but yeah, once this box is full, I do plan on like continuing with that and just decorating and painting a new box so that way they're all contained. Um, but as far as what I am doing here on camera... Um, 
I was going to just paint it all the one solid navy blue on the inside, but I think once I started painting, I ran out of that dark blue, and because I had it so close to the cobalt teal, my paintbrush got a little bit of that, and I really like that, like, swirl of color that it made, and, like, that's the beautiful thing with acrylic paint is you can create, like, all these really cool looking textures and swirls just by mixing two colors like that. So yeah, so I enjoyed the way that looked and I think I had already finished the front cover for the most part in the navy blue, so I just left that solid. But I did do that like swirly pattern for the inside. Um, this whole project took me about an hour to complete. You, it's probably better if you wait between layers, like to let, I mean, wait before you continue. Um, the different steps of the project just because my hands are absolutely filthy by the end of this project because I am super impatient. I Once I have a project in my mind, like I, I just want to, I just want to complete it. I, I want to know what it looks like at the end. And so I just rush for, through it. So I always end up get, making a mess. Uh, but yeah, if you're a more patient person, I'd probably recommend waiting for the paint to dry. Um, so here I am tracing the outline of where I want my art foamy to go. Now, I did want this image to pop. Um, I didn't want the whole entire cover just to all be that blue. Like, I wanted her to stick out more. So I took just like a regular basic white acrylic paint and I filled in the space where I was going to put the stamp. Now the pen that I use to make the outline is like a friction pen. So friction pens, if you um, hit them with a heat gun or any type of heat, the ink does, I don't want to say dissolve, but disappears, it's like a disappearing ink of sorts. Um, and I figured that was the best thing to use because if I used a pencil, I'd either have to try and erase it, which I knew was going to be very complicated because this while it's a, a, you know, it is a wooden box, so it had a little bit of texture, so there are a little bit of like, not uneven edges, but like little grooves, so erasing would have been very, very difficult, and I don't think I would have successfully erased everything if I used a pencil. And then the same thing with the pen, I would have had to have painted over it, so I figured the friction, um, uh, ink would be best because I could just hit this with my heat gun afterwards or just like leave it out in the sun and the ink would disappear. But yeah, so here I am taking some, I th what I thought was modeling paste. I was wrong. This is actually the texture paste from Tim Holtz. It's like the crackle one. Um, it leaves a really cool effect. The only thing with the crackle paste is you are supposed to wait a full, I think, 24 hours before you add any kind of like wet pigment on top just to give it time to like properly cure and set. Um, but for this, I added some yellow paint to the crackle paste, which you can do to give you more of an opaque color um, because I did want these stars, I did want yellow stars. Uh, I'm not the best, I think this project just like reiterated the fact that my impatience makes me using stencils and paint through those through said stencils it's just not my forte so it came out a little stars came out a little sloppy some of them are very defined some not so much um, but I tried so here I am tracing the hand art foamies these are a separate set by the same artist um, I think it's only like 11 bucks or 12 bucks for this set um, so I'm just repeating the same process where I am using the friction pen and then filling in those areas with white. Um, and I really, really loved how the finished product looked once I actually stamped everything. It just, it, it just came out perfect. Um, so I stamped my hands first because, you know, they go over the, um, the image of the woman. And so I did this technique that I learned several years ago. I think it's called masking. 
Um, but I like to do this on sticky notes because sticky notes have that adhesive on the back that's very easy to remove and peel off. So what you do is whatever you do not, whatever area of your stamp that you do not want to be stamped over or like colored in at all, you, you stamp the image, the stamp itself on a sheet of paper, cut it out and then layer it over the area where your stamp is. This way, if you stamp over it, that covered area doesn't get any media on it. So with that technique, I was able to stamp the image of the woman and the hands without having to like repaint the whole thing. Um, now here, like I said, I'm still trying to figure out like how to work with art foamies and acrylic paint and stuff. So my image wasn't super opaque and it wasn't like, or the black wasn't like very, it didn't pop as much. So I did go back over it with more acrylic paint and a brush, which was fine. Um, so after, I think like a day after I finished this project, I wanted to clean it up a little bit more and I decided to fill in a little bit more of the black outline with a Posca paint marker, like a black one. And that worked way better than trying to use a tiny brush. I mean, if you're very skilled and you have a lot of control with your hands, then definitely if you prefer to do like a thinner paintbrush to fill everything in, by all means do that. But for me, like I have, I drink a lot of caffeine and like I said, super impatient. So for me, these like fine details at my hands just, just doesn't work. So yeah, the Posca paint pen worked wonders for me after the fact. But yeah, so I colored this in or touched up a little bit. And uh, yeah, I really, I was very, very impressed, very proud of myself for completing this project. I think, I mean, I could have bought a box that was already like just a generic box that was pre-decorated, but I think there's a lot more attachment with something that you create with your own hands and that you decorate, you know, to fit your aesthetic. And yeah, I really, I loved this project and I loved just the whole process of like putting it together and just like customizing it to fit my needs. Um, and I also really love that I just took this box that like nobody, I really didn't think anybody was going to buy it because honestly the clasp is like missing a screw or two. So it was a little wonky. Um, and yeah, I really didn't think anyone was going to show this box love. So I think being able to turn it into something functional and beautiful and just something that I, you know, I enjoy looking at it. Like even if I didn't use it for iCAD, I would still have this on my desk because it is just, yeah, I just love it. It's my favorite colors and yeah. But anywho, um, it is, this video is coming out a little bit later than I intended. I did plan on sending this or putting this up at the beginning of the month, but that did not happen, unfortunately. But better late than never, right? Um, so by the time this video comes up, ICAD will be have been going for a good 15 days, 15, 16 days at this point. And I am proud to say that I have kept up with it. Um, I think, you know, I know when I the first year I did ICAD, I did do a couple videos with like process videos and stuff. And I was watching some of those or going back and looking at them. And all of my like iCADs that first year, at least the first few that I made, were so time consuming. Like I put so much effort um, into them and it like wore me out. It burnt me out really fast. So this year I'm keeping things very, very simple. And I think that's why I've been able to just continue to do it. Um, and it's something I look forward to now. So very proud of myself for that. Um, real quick, this stencil is just a cheap stencil that I got at an action here, which is like a dollar store, like a dollar tree of sorts, or not a dollar tree, like a dollar general, I would say. Um, it's a discount store. 
And this is when I realized, or not realized, but it just like further cemented that me and stencils and paint like this, I need a lot more practice. I, you can see it's a hot mess. Like the image isn't very clear. It's very muted and like blurred together. And now I could have painted over it, which is another beautiful thing about acrylic paint. You can just paint over and start again. Uh, but I left it because, like I said, I wanted this box to just be a representation of me and all of my messy, <laughs> crafty idiosyncrasies and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I just left it. it. It gives it a little charm and makes it seem a little more homemade. But yeah, so at this point, this is when I realized that I used Crackle Base and I was not, I, that was not the original look I was going for. Um, but it worked. I mean, I do like it now, but at the time I was just like, oh shoot, I used crackle paste. So yeah, I also had that gilding wax, um, from a project that I did, I think a year ago where I upcycled a shoe box into this like really cool looking, um, this really cool looking box. I will post the link for that YouTube video because that artist, that tutorial was like on point and I have since made like two boxes using that same technique. Um, but yeah, so I had that gilded wax, wax left over, gilded wax, that I decided to use um, to kind of, I don't know, Tie, oh, well, I use it to tie in a little bit to the gold hardware um, to give it a little bit of cohesion. Um, so yeah, I put it on all of the ed edges of the box. I put it on the inside, um, all that good stuff. I know in the video, it sh I did not paint the bottom of the box. I did do that after the fact. Like after this, I did go back and clean it up just a little bit more. Um, yeah, to fine tune it, but that's, you know, I would have done it on camera. I was just, yeah, a lot at this point. But anywho, this is how she turned out and I loved it. Oh, so very much. All right, guys, with that, thank you so much for watching. I will let you guys go. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Y'all have a good one. Bye. Thank you.